first thing you want to do is you want to ohm out the compressor. So this is a ZF compressor, our, one of our low temp compressors. It's a K4 model, so that means it's a liquid injection. So the first step in troubleshooting a scroll compressor is get Copa Mobile out and scan that model number. This is a 19A, so I know it's from January 2019. So almost two years old. And it's a ZF compressor, K4, which I know is a liquid injection compressor. There's our third port on it here. I had the guys cut this open for me. So you want to match up the winding resistance to Copa Mobile once again. So what do I get here? I want uh, 1.3, sorry, 0 0.6, 1.9, 1.4. So what does that tell me? Is this a three phase or a single phase compressor? Let's do it again. So we got 1.9, 1 1.4, 1 and 0.6. You see that? 0 0.6, 1 1.4, and 1 1.9. So that highest one would be your start to run. Your next highest one would be your common to start. And then your last one will be common to run. So when you're looking it up in Copa Mobile, there will be two numbers, common to start, common to run. And that's what you want to match them up to. So this motor looks good. I haven't high pot tested and high pot or uh, mega metering the compressor will check the leakage of voltage or current sorry in the windings so really check in the the windings uh insulation so we know it looks good right now so next step is learning how to cut open so here is the weld mark if you can see the weld mark right here what you want to do is cut a half inch below so as you can look right here quarter inch to a half inch below. You can use a sawzaw, a zip cutter. Uh, what you need to make sure is that when you're in your um, lab doing this, you want to really clamp down the compressor with a C clamp maybe, or screw it down to uh, a pallet uh, while you're cutting this open so the scroll doesn't move all over the place. And then you want to cut it all the way around. If you have a digital compressor, digital compressors are ZPD, or you guys, but if you have a D with that, that means it's digital. You have to cut above and then below. So that's just for digital. So you take the top off, you look, see if there's a lot of heat. Here's where the immersion, ball, uh, immersion bulb is for the injection. So this is your temperature. So this is the uh, temperature probe monitoring the discharge temperature right here. So the first step is to take a look inside it. I had the guys pull it apart for me a little bit. And as you can see, this is the injection tube. They took this off where we're actually injecting refrigerant into the compressor to cool it down. So this here, injection port right here, liquid refrigerant comes in here. There is a DTC valve on here, or an injection valve. You want to have five degrees subcooling coming into here, at least five degrees subcooling coming into this valve, and then you'll have refrigerant in here, flashing in here, cooling the compressor off. This is the floating seal. So let's pull off the floating seal, see how it looks. Usually two flat heads work really well, two small flat heads or pocket screwdrivers.
So there we go, this is the floating seal. This is the main component of a scroll compressor. So this does all the magic. So what happens in the compressor when it starts up, this floating seal is pushed right up against there and it seals with, um, it seals with oil. And it's pushed up there because it has a, a port drilled right in here. Pressure pushes up here and forces this fixed scroll down. And it's important to know that, and that's why compression ratio is so important. If compression ratio is really high, this will be unbalanced and it will separate the scroll set. So this is a key component in it. And it looks good, there's no damage, it's not ripped. Next we got uh, our spacer pins, our spacers and our, our pins. So this one has four, some only have three. So let's take this off. This is called an HVE valve, high efficiency valve for our discharge, out our discharge. Um, as you can see here, this is what it looks like inside. There, I'm not sure if you can see it. Inside there, there is, right there, that's your interstage port. And that's where that pressure pushes up on the floating seal, which pushes against the top of the muffler plate and forces this down. Okay, looking inside there, there is a bit of scroll galling. There's like, if you can see, there's some circles in there, maybe really hard to see, which that means refrigerant got up in there, some liquid got it up into there, if you see that. Not too much heat on this one, which is okay. So a little bit of that. So now we take a look here. So this here, this is oscillates. This is the orbiting scroll right here. This oscillates back and forth. Doesn't look too bad. When we take this off here and take a look at it, yeah, there's some more scroll galling in there. So it's those round circles. That means that that oil, because it's always supposed to be oil in here, lubricating uh, and keeping the seal inside here. So there's always a foam, an oil foam in there uh, just to seal them up. But when you get those round circles, if you can see them, I know it's hard to see. That means that some refrigerant got in there and washed the oil. Let's flip it over. Okay, so now here's where all the magic is. As we talked about, this is a refrigerant cool compressor. If we have a lot of wear here, what is that from? What causes that? Yeah, flood back, 100%. So that means this oil coming up to here started to get diluted, diluted, diluted by liquid refrigerant. And by the time you get up to this top bearing and bushing, as you can see, this goes in here. This should not be, this should not be able to move. And as you can see, I know 100% now that this compressor failed from flood back, okay? So she's, it still spins, not very good though. Yeah, she's not spinning that great either. So this is called a thrust surface. And you can see, look at all this scroll galling here, all these circles, that's from liquid refrigerant getting up and washing the oil away, causing that damage. I don't have to go any further on this compressor because I know Floodback took out this compressor. We need to figure out the, the problem. What caused that? Was it the TX valve? Was it a loss of load? Was it after a defrost that, that, that had happened? Was it from uh, shutting off the thermostat, or sorry, shutting off the fans and not closing the solenoid valve to the evaporator? Was the evaporator plugged? Something caused that not to boil off in that uh, uh, evaporator. This is called Oldham coupling that gives it an os its oscillating motion. And that's it. You don't have to go any further. We, when we inspect it here at, at Copeland, we will cut it down, we'll cut the bottom off, we'll inspect the, the bottom bearing, we will pull out the internal, um, we'll pull out the internal protector and check that to see how often it trip. But that's it. Let's, let's get back uh, to the uh, rest of the presentation.